the assignment was specific. Get photographs of the surface of the moon that are good enough to determine whether or not it's safe for a man to land there. But appearances can be deceiving. Just as deceiving as trying to get a good picture of, well, a candy apple. Doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Just set it up, light it, and snap the picture. Easy, quick, simple. But it can be tough. As the technology of man and space was developing, it became more and more apparent that our knowledge of the moon's surface as a possible landing site was not sufficient. To land man safely on the moon and get him safely off again, we had to know whether we could set up a precise enough trajectory to reach the moon. Could we design and build a spacecraft to land gently on the moon? Among all those lunar craters, could we find a place clear and level enough for a safe landing site? To make it possible for a man to land in the Apollo zone on the moon, better pictures were needed than those taken through Earth's best telescopes. In fact, better pictures might do more than find a landing site for Apollo. Scientists hoped they might resolve questions unanswered in the 300 years since Copernicus prompted Galileo to study the moon. What were the lunar craters Galileo observed? Rounding the back shoulder of the moon, one orbiter got an exceptional shot, the first photograph of Earth seen from outer space. From afar, Earth seems shrouded in clouds, much as Venus has always looked. To scientists, this photograph suggests that Venus may not be hidden beneath a perpetual cloud cover. A TV camera close enough to photograph Venus may find holes through which to see this planet with greater clarity. Who knows what a closer look at the evening star will bring? What answers may be found? Or what new questions man may have to ask about the nature of the universe? And surprisingly enough, these lunar photo missions have shown scientists views of Earth no man had ever seen before. This is the first photograph of the nearly full planet from 215,000 miles away. It will provide additional information on the amount of sunlight reflected by Earth. In 1950, astronomer Fred Hoyle lamented that man had seen all he would ever see through even the most powerful telescopes. It was time, he said, to leave the Earth. Within a hundred years from 1950, Hoyle hoped man might be able to launch a rocket with a radio-operated camera and see the Earth as it looks from outer space. Much more has been done. The doing wasn't easy. The plans didn't always work. But when they did, they took us beyond the dreams of the 50s to a point where, within 20 years of Hoyle's modest wish, two Americans will actually land on the surface of the moon. In the meantime, there will be more great pictures like this now famous photograph. When this happens, Hoyle predicted, when we can leave Earth with a camera and move out into space, it is certain to make marked changes in our whole outlook on life. The apple is still there.